touch yet? You know, just when Are the, the technology, when it started, I, you know, did a couple of tests with people. You know, everybody wanted to try it, but, you know, I haven't recorded anything. Uh, I don't know why. It just Well, it's, it's, it's cool. Google, right? It's easy. <laughs> it's yeah. free. I, uh, it's funny, you used to spend all this money on, uh, on uh, Web, WebEx and, you know, all those other things, and now Google has it for free. It's like, psh. Oh, I know. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you def it's one of those things you definitely don't want to be in Google's aim of whatever you're doing, right? Yeah. yeah I don't know. So, so what are you, what are you doing? The, what are you keeping your eye on these days? I mean, clearly geospatial in nature. I mean, what, what, what catches your eye? What am I watching? Um, well, in the immediate now, um, you know, I'm getting really interested in LIDAR and watching it. Like, it, um, I think what got me thinking about that, we, our company, we've got a, you know, another site that's called LIDAR News, and I'm pretty, I'm hands off with it, but mm -hmm. you know, everything we do has geo. But uh, just kind of watching that at a distance take off. Um, you know, the popularity of that site's really grown, kind of within our own, within our industry, that little niche. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's some really cool stuff going on in that, in that space. Um, and, you know, it's really up and coming. Everything, you know, the cloud and uh, <laughs> the cloud. Uh, cheap data, everything, <laughs> you know, everything's, everything's intertwined and in making that, you know, those kind of, uh, that kind of technologies to reality. But I, I think... I think LiDAR is really exciting. Yeah, I mean, points are boring on their own, but when you add, I guess I should say Z, right, because you're Canadian, the Z value, yeah. uh, all of a sudden it becomes pretty crazy. Uh, you know, you remember, who was that band? Was it, uh, was it Radiohead? Who was it that had that LiDAR video? You remember that? Yeah, you're right. A couple right. years ago? Yeah. Who was that? You know, I was watching that on YouTube not too long ago. It popped up on some search. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty sweet, and uh, I don't know. I, you know, lidar is one of those things where you keep thinking it's going to take off, right? And for whatever reason, it, it doesn't. But I think you're right. I think in the last year, there's something about maybe the software is in place, the data is finally readily available, and we've got bandwidth to push this data around. Maybe, maybe it's finally time for lidar, right? Yeah. You know, exactly. Our hardware is catching up. We can actually use the stuff and, uh, you know, and get wowed by it. Yeah, and, and there's so much of it being collected by, you know, Google and some of these other companies. As they go down, they drive down the streets, they've got those LiDAR, uh, I don't know, what do you call them, machines up top shooting the lasers everywhere. Yeah. And you get to yeah. see that, those 3D cities, they're pretty cool. Um, yeah. and who's that, Topcom or who's the guy? Who's, they always have that, guy, that truck there at the Ezra UC. Oh yeah, parked outside. There's a couple of them. Ge Ge Geo Digital, I think, is another one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Take you for the drive. Yeah, yeah. That's always. It, you always wonder though. You're sitting there and you see that little thing spinning really fast, and you're like, "What kind of cancer is this giving me?" <laughs> oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Why is my forehead all of a sudden really hot? I don't know. <laughs> I got a sunburn. I try not to worry about that stuff. Man, well, here, speaking of that, we've got in, in our little area, people here like to protest about everything. And, uh, you know, it only takes two people. Two people can <laughs> take an entire mega project, d drag it down to its knees, right? Yep. Um, smart meters is, is one of the latest ones. Like, Why? There's, there's this coalition of people. I think there's probably about 20 of them. Um, they don't want smart meters in their homes. Oh, because um, they're tracking, and, government tracking what I'm doing? <laughs> no, I actually they're worried that uh, they're worried about the health effects. So I guess the microwave. Um, I mean, it's ridiculous. You can imagine, you know, what kind of emissions are you getting from your this meter attached to your house compared to like this thing slapped yeah. up against yeah. your face all the time? Um, but they're actually succeeding in in slowing down and almost halting uh, the uptake of smart meters. Which is Frickin' Canadians, man! You guys are. You need a war or something to keep you guys distracted. Oh, I don't know. I just uh, and when I when I when I tweet, you know, facepalm, which is quite often, I'm I'm literally, you know. Yeah. I'm like no. That. Yeah. Oh. So, so the one thing actually I'm really interested in talking to you about, since you're kind of a, a aficionado of it, is uh, Nokia. Um. <clears throat> 
what the hell's going on with Nokia's mapping? Um, I mean, what are they doing? They seem so out of control every which way, and there's no focus. Oh, facepalm. Yeah, I should tweet that. Uh, face, facepalm, uh, hashtag facepalm Nokia. Yeah, what, what's, what's going on with them? Why? They seem, I mean, I'll just tell you what I, as someone who doesn't know anything about anything. Um, they seem very well placed. I mean, Navtech, are you kidding me? They're in Google, I mean, not Google, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, you know, highly respected mapping provider. Um, yet, Nokia can't leverage that for their own needs. Why? Yeah. You know, it's mind boggling. The, the disconnect between Nokia and, uh, and Navtech is astounding when you consider the money that was involved in that whole deal and they've near neither one of them has really recognized the other you know you never a lot of people in the industry probably still don't even realize that Nokia owns an app tech mm. and for whatever reason they've you know inside they've decided to to uh, use that strategy um, but where are they going I don't know with mapping you know at first Nokia Maps came out. It, you know, the stuff was nice. They've, they've got so much great imagery. Yeah. Um, but just the way that they roll stuff out, it's, um, you know, they change their mind and flip-flop. Um, you know, Nokia here now and changing the names. They, they do, they're brilliant at confusing people. Right, OV Maps, Nokia Maps, here. I mean, Nokia yeah, Maps was fine. Good. Nokia Maps tells me everything I need to know. It's the mapping system by Nokia. Yeah, you know why? Exactly. Um, maybe they want to differentiate themselves somehow. Um, yeah, exactly. Nokia Maps works works just fine for me. So that's what's interesting is <clears throat> they're they're also a competitor for a lot of these in services, right? Well, being in Microsoft or, or being mm -hmm. in in, uh, in Navtech, that's a little confusing. But Amazon, right? Amazon's using uh, Navtech. Um, that's a competitor yeah. for Nokia. You know, Nokia, Navtech is making Amazon a better platform. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, you know, you almost wonder, you know, internally, is there, uh, you know, is, is, at some level, did the Nokia, the, the phone execs say, you know what, we don't need to really promote this stuff because, right. you know, last thing we want is Amazon having yeah. coming a phone, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I know. I guess they're in, that's, that's part of the solution in, uh, or the part of the response to why the the disconnect in the Nokia Navtech, right? We want to, okay, we you know we don't want to shout this out loud too much and uh, screw up our bread and butter. <clears throat> you know, revenue growth is coming from Navtech data. So it's, it's, a lot of people got to use it. Oh man, hey, Lara, uh, Laren, he uh, he just did kind of a little dig at you. He said he called you a stand-in. <laughs> You're not a stand, Laren. He's not a stand-in. He, I've had this plan for years, right? Yeah. No, it, it, I'm a slept in. I slept in today. See, oh, I'm not no. feeling too good this week, right? So. Right. I, I, no, the, the truth is, I figured, who else, you know, at 11 a.m. Uh, uh, would be around not doing anything? Ah, Glenn. Glenn's not doing anything. Yeah. No, he's probably out walking his dog or at Starbucks or something, though. You 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 abuse that little dog, that poor thing. Yeah, Make her sit out. Right here beside Make her yeah. sit outside in the rain. Sad face. Yeah. Abuser, poor He's thing. Really. Right. So, yeah. so what do you know about Amazon and their map? You know what? Nothing. I know. I, I'll be honest. Uh, yeah. Me too. I. Is it? Intentional on their part that they don't want to tell anyone what they're doing, or are they just not organized yet? It's almost like they, you know, the companies like that just kind of, whoa, what just happened? Did I just go off? No, you're here. Oh, okay. Well, my screen just freaked out. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's like they just feed these little teasers. Okay, we're getting involved in mapping now, and we're rolling out our platform, and um, you know, we want to get developers on board, and then that's it. You don't hear anything else. So maybe it's just kind of at the, you know, research stage, and you know, something's going on in, uh, you know, in Seattle, I guess, and behind closed doors. Part yeah, I don't know. I, Who knows? Yeah. Did you see? Um, well, it's probably not that big of a deal, but Small World and Google are teaming up to do some sort of web mapping. Wow. 
Team, but teaming up, what does that really mean, right? Yeah, Team, teaming up. We're no, teaming and, up to uh, change the world, but in reality, you know, unless you have money uh, involved yeah. either way, it's like, oh, yeah, we'll look at different ways to work together. Yeah, we're teaming up, partnering. I don't know what is that now. You know, maybe just they're an enterprise partner or something. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was one of the big yeah. news that came out of IL. MF uh, from a couple of people I've talked to was is again Geo Digital who's Canadian I think they're uh, you know they inked some partnership I posted that news earlier uh, with Google don't know what it's going to mean but uh, you know more point cloud lidar stuff but integrated into Google Google Enterprise <clears throat> see yeah. more focus on the enterprise uh, level though well that's I think Google still hopes that that Google Earth Enterprise and whatever the heck Google Earth Builders called now Google Map Builder I guess um, maybe they hope that'll eventually be something. I, do, have you heard of any company actually using Google's stuff intentionally? No, rarely. rarely yeah. yeah, I don't yeah, know. It's, it's funny. Whatever happened to Google Earth? You know, Man, <laughs> is anybody using Google Earth anymore? They Google are. Earth? It actually, a lot of people use it. You just don't know. You don't even think about it anymore. It's like, well, who uses Microsoft Word? Well, <laughs> you don't ask anybody if yeah, they use yeah. it, right? You know, yeah. I think it's. I mean, I don't think it's this magical desktop app that everyone launched. You know, we thought, oh, this will be the way we share GIS data. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but you know, people still save imagery out of it, yeah, illegal or <laughs> against the license or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it's funny. I actually, the thing that I use it more than anything else, Google Earth, is the historical imagery. Mm. I, I just, for some reason, I'll, I'll work somewhere. I go, ah, oh, and then I go and I click the little slider and go back and say, oh yeah, the world used to be black and white <laughs> ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the other thing, hey, uh, Landsat Eight actually made it up. It didn't fall into the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Amazing wow. Landsat. I, yeah, big news this week. Big news. I this guess. Week. I, I got a kick out of uh, Mano, Mano Marks, and they posted his uh, picture of him wearing his Landsat hat. Yeah. And I asked him, I said, shouldn't there be an eight behind that? And he just figured oh, Landsat had, uh, you know, NASA had uh, boxes of these things left over from the 60s. And so they <laughs> started handing them out again. That's that's funny. I I almost you know I I sort of get why Landsat exists, but at the same time you almost wonder what's the point with you know Digital Globe sort of having all these satellites up there. Why can't they just pay Digital Globe? Here's here's two million dollars to throw this sensor on your existing you know constellation. Wouldn't that be cheaper? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or exactly. I, or am I just being a crazy American with his uh, <laughs> privatization ideas? <laughs> Yeah, well, they don't want to privatize the entire um, Earth imaging uh, business, I guess, uh, even though they pretty much are. Yeah, you, well, you have to be careful with uh, Landsat because it offends people when you <laughs> you make fun of it. Like, some people are really, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like a religion. Still keeping people employed. So. Yeah, I guess so. And, oh, and speaking of pe keeping people employed, what did you think of that uh, tile mill map box uh, National Park Service map from last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that not like beautiful? Doing cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that. I'll tell you, there's that CSS Cardo CSS stuff. There's an amazing cartography that's being generated with that stuff. I mean, we've known for years that Mapnik can create beautiful. Uh, maps, but it's always so hard to use, right? The Mapnik styles are kind of XML-ish and crazy, and oh, you need to use Python and this and this. And now you can grab that same power and you just do it, you know, inside a tile mill and autocomplete practically. Um, I wonder if we'll see more of that. I think, you know, the traditional way was create your map using uh, Esri uh, MXD and then publish with ArcGIS server and it goes into whatever this year's uh, GeoGov uh, cloud thing is called, <laughs> <laughs> the Geo platform or whatever we're calling it this year, and uh, people would forget about it, right? So maybe this is a way to get people to actually start using it. It's kind of cool, too, because, I don't know, usually you create a map service, right? National Park Service create a map service, and have it would just be baked completely, right? You can't turn anything on and off. This layer, you can turn off the parks, you can turn off the roads, you can turn off uh, the symbols, um, and use it as just a, a simple base map if you want it, which I think is really yeah. awesome. 
gives you know, people what they want. Well, it ties in nicely with the whole that whole uh, you know that crowd of uh, mashup artists and that that are out there. People you know that have to that want to be supporting all the open source and the open tools that are around. So there's a whole crop of those people. I I love it because we hear about all these kind of non traditional map makers that come out with these just awesome visualizations. Um, I, I love seeing that because it probably takes you know really takes the traditional uh, cartographers and GIS folks back a bit going, wow, you know, look at all the attention these guys are getting. Why can't we do that? You know, look at all the tools we're using and paying for it. Well, I think at some level, right, that they had the story maps, and then Esri came out with story maps because I think that's the whole thing now. You know, how do you tell a story with a map? I, I don't understand the marketing behind story maps, but it seems that people enjoy that idea. Um, so I think it's only a matter of time before Esri starts realizing, hey, this existing cartography engines that we have are, are problematic and either either say, hey, it's Mapbox, Cardo stuff is awesome and we'll leverage it or, you know, create their own Esri-flavored Cardo, which is probably yeah. <laughs> more yeah. more apt to be their way. Um, you know, people, I just saw um, Tony on uh, uh, Twitter just said, uh, Esri won't allow Mapbox to really take market share before they try and buy and roll it into the collective. I, I don't know about the the DevSieve guys. I think they're sort of outside of that. And uh, at some level, you almost wonder if Esri can't buy companies anymore. You know, not. Uh, yeah, you know, I kind of wondered back, you know, last year if that something like that was going to happen as well. Esri was on a little bit of a tear, you know, acquisitions here and there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they said actually, Tony, you're right. I mean, I know map map story came first, and then Esri story maps came after. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we, we, uh, <laughs> I don't want to go down that rabbit hole as far as who copied who, but yeah, they Esri was not first on that. But um, yeah, the story maps they're good for generating buzz. Um, they're a little sometimes they're a little clunky to work with. I get their uh, you know their PR folks will send me uh, preview links of certain story maps that are just for media use and. Uh, like the one for the uh, so to yesterday, right? That, that was an example. And sometimes they're kind of clunky to work with. I remember a couple months ago, I had to reply back to him saying, "This is really great, and you want me to share it, but you haven't included any embed code or or way for me to get." I guess I, you know, so I had to kind of. Yeah. So someone there sent me the code um, or showed me how I could go hack it and grab the code. So, and then the next iteration included that. Yeah, but it's I, great for generating buzz. I think it's from a People from a C a C level, right? I'm the CIO, the GIO, whatever of a state, and whatever thing comes at this all of a sudden the news, they can create a little you know story map that basically like those infographics you always see on Wall Street Journal or, or New York Times articles where you sort of click on that thing and you get to explore it a little bit. I think that's. People like that idea. Um, it's just as you said, it's a little clunky. GIS is clunky though, and it's own right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Well, maybe it's getting to that. Forget about uh, making the whole web service available for people to try to use. Just just push out the uh, um, the results and and the visualizations to folks, and uh, and get, and then maybe give them access to the data as well, so they can mess around with it too. Um, it's fun. People like messing with data too. I, I hit the city of Vancouver site. It's really good there. Uh, yeah, they've been definitely. real, real kind of early adopters in the whole open gov movement, and uh, they got a great catalog. Way back, it was messing around with bike trails data. It's fun. Yeah, the thing I like about about Vancouver's and North Vancouver's got a nice site too. Is They've got, you know, I, I don't know if you've played around with FME 2013 a lot yet, but they're in a kind of nice because you can actually take a URL to a zip file and paste it into a workbench script. And so I can go to Vancouver, find a, a neighborhood, and click on that URL and paste it into uh, FME, and away I go. There's no stupid web services. There's nothing. I could just grab it and bring it into my workflow. I think that's brilliant. And a lot of these new data sharing sites like here's your WFS right Are you kidding me I'm gonna bring WFS yeah. into my workflow <laughs> not if I can help it um, I don't know I think I think there's some yeah. simplicity to this all that that makes sense you know rather than going through this whole big here's your geo dashboard it's almost like just give me a list of download just zip files I can download FTP but no one really wants FTP but that list that HTML list of files 
You know, that's yeah. the simplicity of that just works. And it doesn't cost a lot of money, though I shouldn't say that as a consultant, right? I'm doing myself. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you pay me a lot of money to tell you that you shouldn't pay me a lot of money. Right? That works. That works. Do I got that figured out? I haven't figured. <laughs> You're right, though. Ep Epime is pretty awesome. I'm again. I'm you know I'm not a user of it. I used to use it way way back actually. It's been around so long. Yeah. And, no. uh, especially here in BC. Back in my uh, when I worked for the BC Geological Survey on uh, consulting work, they were kind of early adopters and guinea pigs with the. Uh, um, with safe software stuff. Yeah, no, that. Yeah, right. I. They make, it's, things easy. they make it easy, that's for sure. Yeah, I just, you know, we used it at Weo Geo. Clearly, all Weo Geo was built on it. Um, but I use it personally all the time because I just, there's no easier way for me to do this. I got an email from somebody. I'm actually going to blog, do a blog post about this. Um, but they were, they were saying that. Um, a lot of the extensions you get for ArcGIS, when you come up with a new version, they lag. So, you know, you want to move to 10.1, but the extensions are written for 10 or 9.3. You can't do your work. And, uh, you know, and so I'm thinking, well, see, the problem is you got to get your, your workflows out of, um, you know, version-specific requirements. And, uh, you know, at some point, FME has, a, you know, obviously if you use FME 2013, you got to use FME 2013. But, you know, sort of extracting out these, these – uh, Geoprocessing into Python or something else that's a little more independent, I, you know. I think that's that's the future of GIS rather than. I know, though. Maybe I could make a business of converting up converting extensions. Right? Now, that seems like a bad idea. I talked to Brian Flood about it. converting data. That's <sighs> yeah. You know, it was funny years ago. Years ago, I thought. The Mechanical Turk, the Amazon Mechanical Turk. I thought, yeah, we'll somehow use this as this is a geoprocessing engine. Hey guys, mm -hmm. I'm surprised nobody has come up with that yet. You know how you could break down a complex geoprocessing model and outsource it to Mechanical Turk and <laughs> for 15 cents. Well, I don't want to give away the whole farm or give away all the trade secrets. But if you if you break it up to little parts, then you don't really know. Everyone just says, oh, all I'm doing is counting the mother of pixels in this little image. <laughs> you know, but then there's more work to that, right? You have to figure it out. You're, it's funny, years ago, this is actually a use case for Mechanical Turk that I haven't had to do yet, but uh, I was doing some work down in the Goldwater Range, which is a huge Air Force range in southern Arizona. It's like the size of Virginia or two Virginias. I mean, it's a big uh, Air Force range. And they were trying to look at historical use of the range. And the way it was was you could count craters because you could see where they used to bomb um, – hills and things. You know, they don't do it anymore, but they want to know where they used to do this kind of stuff. And so we hired these interns and they would look at these aerial images, you know, they'd pull up one square image and they'd count <laughs> how many craters they could do. I thought, the right, but you could do that in Mechanical Turk, right? You could just bring the individual things and say, hey, count the craters and you get 10 cents. And if you could do a whole bunch of them, you could nail it. Yeah. And uh, though I don't, you know, nowadays you just don't do that. I think you almost be, might be able to do some sort of algorithm to, to pull out those craters um, using some of these tools you have now. But I don't, I don't know. I don't do rasters well, we'll keep the intern. Got to keep the interns employed. <laughs> well, if they're unpaid interns, right, then it's no worry. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're paying interns, man, it's that's not GIS. It's all unpaid internships, right? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, Tony again. Tony's watching. He says uh, DARPA just had. Uh, I was asking about mechanical Turk capabilities. So, uh, DoD's thinking about um, using mechanical Turk for stuff. Um, maybe it could be a map where you can say, "Oh, where are the potential sources of terrorists?" And <laughs> vote, vote where you want the next uh, uh, smart bomb to land. <laughs> we'll crowdsource this. Uh -oh, crowdsource was, it. There you go. No, I don't know if you want to crowdsource that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> Comments are going to start flowing now. Oh no. So, so what are your plans for the next couple months? What are you looking at doing? Looking at uh, having fun with? Um, in the uh, in the near term, taking a trip to Fort Collins mm. at the end of this month. So, let's try to tag team. Yeah, just uh, yeah, pleasure, pleasure trip. Check out the. Try the local brews and um, yeah, take in. It just so happens that uh, 
what, there's an Ignite Fort Collins. I always like them. They're kind of some of the first Ignites to go to. I actually pitched to speak at this, but I was too late, so I messed up. I'm a backup speaker now. Oh. Yeah. They may, they may drop me a, you know, people always bail on those things, so. Totally, totally. Yeah. So I was going to talk about uh, just smartphone photography and, uh, you know, I'll probably tie in some cool mapping stuff you can do, too. And uh, Dev Meetup, or, yeah, Dev Meetup is going to be there. Uh, oh. So, yeah, there's uh, the one. Crew. There's one in Tucson, I think, coming up. I don't know why they keep not coming to Phoenix. Maybe they don't want to be around me. <laughs> but uh, I'm going down they don't to come Tucson. To Phoenix? No, I haven't seen them in a while. I mean, it's been about two years. I guess I should bug those guys and ask them what the hell. But uh, yeah, I talked to Andy. Andy Gump, and uh, I don't know. You got no good microbreweries there? Maybe that is. Something you kidding me? I got a micro. I got two microbreweries right around the corner. Okay. Oh, you know what? I gotta grab something. Uh oh. So shameless plug. Oh, not a shameless plug, really. <laughs> shameless. So anyone, yes, yeah, shameless. So if anyone watching is gonna be at Dev Meetup in Fort Collins, mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring a couple of goodies. Uh, Esri Press, they always send me uh, loads of goodies. Oh, that's so, a uh, book you want, yeah. Yeah, this one. I've got this. I should be done flipping through it by then. So I'm gonna bring it. I'll give it away to someone while I'm there. Yeah, that's like seventy people. bucks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it's pretty it. good. And I'm I'm no Python programmer, but uh, it's it's a pretty good book. That's cool. You're giving away, uh, well, so so actually, just to remember, what's this Nokia speaker thing you have? I saw you playing with. Oh yeah, it's, it's like great. a jawbone, but it's not. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. Uh oh. There we go. So it's on. It's really cool. It's in the next room, and uh, so I got my iPad here. Check yeah. this out. I'll, uh, I think I'm connected. Bluetooth. Oops. Bluetooth. Yeah, by Bluetooth. So I'm firing up. Uh, I'll fire up my uh, internet radio app. All right. All right. Think the Jim Rome shows on. No one on this staff is tough enough, and that's a problem. The jungle is in the house. There you go. That's so nice. it's great, you know, controlling us. So I lie in bed sometimes, and I just, you know, I like the music on and whatever, listen to NPR or whatever. It's, it's real handy. It sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, no, Every I just saw that. So, yeah, follow Nokia, They especially around event time. I think that was at New Year for CES, and I just happened to see a tweet from them. Hey, retweet this, and... Uh, you can win, and lo and behold, I won this $300 uh, Bluetooth speaker. How do you do that? I never win. I always retweet, and I never win anything. Yeah, I'm so lucky. You know the stuff. God, what have I won? I've won a, uh, a flip, flip pal camera. Um, I won a sweet bathrobe from, uh, <laughs> um, who's, who's Cox? Cox internet internet provider down yeah Colorado. cable company yeah yeah Cox cable I don't even I didn't even have Cox cable <laughs> oh, I, I've won all kinds of crap oh I have to remember that I could be a new giveaway of bathrobes yeah you know stop giving away all this other swag here's your bathrobe here's yeah. your James Fee embroidered uh, <laughs> here's my mug. Uh, <laughs> your you know, I, I've tried giving away stuff too, and it just you know the, I don't know the time it takes to run a little contest, and it's fine. Everybody's busy. It, it really, I, I find overall there's little interest. I've done a few, you know, giving away some uh, maps, mm -hmm. um, just map posters. People dig those, but I don't really do it too much. Oh, speaking oh, of map posters, did you see Steve Coast's Kickstarter? Kickstarter? No. Oh, uh, it's on the doing? it's on the front of my my blog, probably the second oh, okay. thing. So he you, uh, you you've seen his presentations for OSM. He's got that graphic that shows the delivery boys going around London, and you see the GPS traces. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, somehow the he of the data. And... Yeah, yeah. So somehow he got access to GPS tracks for the United all the whole United States, uh, United Kingdom, uh, Germany, the Nether and I think the Netherlands. There might be another country in there. Um, and so you can spend it up to $99. I think for uh, $5 or so, you get a, a JPEG for a desktop, and then I think I did a $59 one for, uh, um, you know, for, uh, I guess, a bigger plot that will go on my wall, poster. And um, I'm going to get it out of Arizona, Phoenix, and I think it's going to be kind of cool. 
Um, so oh. if anybody wants to see a kind of a cool GPS uh, track map, um, I don't remember the, the Kickstarter offhand, but if you go to my blog or any of these uh, planet geospatial stuff, um, you can get it there. It's pretty cool stuff. So, um, and so he's doing it. He's, it it's got a low fund. It's like a $500 limit, you know, uh, minimum. So it's going to get funded. Um, and he's going to sh free ship in the United States, not to Canada though. So yeah, I'm, I'm used to that. Right. I love that. I go to uh, Starbucks and I look at the mug, I flip it over and it's $8 us, $10 Canadian. Yeah. You guys. It's amazing. You know what? For that reason, I was, I'm, at any given time, you hit me up on the street here. I have U.S. U.S. currency in my wallet all the time, and I'll just play like I'm dumb tourist or something. And when I see things priced in uh, U.S. like that, I'll yeah. I'll say, look, I want to pay the U.S. price for them. And <laughs> most of the time, they're kind. Of, well, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> oh. So I went, well, the price is there, eight ninety five U.S. And they they do it. <laughs> Save myself twenty percent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know why that. I mean, I clearly maybe it's because you guys are smaller and shipping's problematic, but it just seems weird. I mean, the Canadian dollar is worth more. Yeah, it's just. A, I'm sure it's a volume thing, right? They just yeah. don't. Yeah, there's forty Canadians and everybody else is in America, so it's it's a little bit different. Yeah. So speaking of Canada, so hockey's back. You got to be excited about that. Yeah, I've, yeah, it must have been from my time time in the states that I just my love and passion for hockey is really waned. Wow. I like baseball, right? I'm, you know, spring training's coming up, yeah. It is it is it, this week is the first week. Pitchers and catchers are running around 2 miles down this road as the Angels, California or the LA Angels of Anaheim uh, yeah. do their spring training. So and, you know, uh, I was scrambling to get my Rockies uh, spring training t-shirt on for this hangout too and I couldn't find the thing. So it's probably all for the best. It's going to be <laughs> another long year for the Rockies. Yeah. I mean, the Giants, World Champs, the Dodgers yeah. spending a gajillion dollars. You know, the Padres, they finished pretty strong at the yeah. end of the year, who knows. Uh uh, well, there's always the Diamondbacks. They're a disaster, but they're not as bad a disaster as the Rockies are. So, I don't know. And then uh, what's his name? Yeah, all uh, the Rockies are. It, it, it. Who's who's the who's the first baseman? Helton. He just like gotten some crazy uh, drunk driving thing. Amazing, and you know they just love Todd Helton in Colorado. He's this good old, you know, good old boy. Yeah. And well, he yeah. proved that, right? He what? He was in his Ford F one fifty going to pick up some chew at three in the morning. Chew. It was apparently uh, a lottery tickets, the the mega yeah, millions. Tickets. You know, and he's like, <laughs> apparently, he was caught like a mile from his house. The, the, the idiot. But uh, we always have that in Scottsdale. Uh, all the ball players are always out drinking at the bars in Scottsdale, so they always get pulled over uh, this time of year. It's always the joke is you you want to make sure you're in your house by midnight, otherwise you're gonna get hit by a baseball player. Hit <laughs> by a baseball player who's driving back to back to the hotel. Yeah, no, it's 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 funny, you know, and. and I don't know baseball. I'm so glad. It's that, that that one week between when the uh, Super Bowl ended and baseball started. It's like you didn't know what to do with yourself. You know, I'm I'm not a hockey player, or not. I don't enjoy hockey anymore. It's kind of the same. I used to younger. I used to enjoy it, but I'm not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. basketball. I'm a Laker fan, and the Lakers suck this year, so I don't even want to pay attention. It's just depressing. So now yeah, I basketball. I don't call. I, I love college basketball. Don't really watch it much because we really get very little coverage, and uh, you know I don't pay for all the extra tiers for you know the sports now. Yeah. And whatnot, but uh, I love you know college watching. Yeah. No. They uh, was it Simon, Simon Fraser might join the NCAA. I keep hearing about. Yeah. So that'd be yeah. They've cool. been talking about that for years. They crank out some good players. And uh, hey, this is right here, Victoria, Steve Nash country. It's weird. This is where he's from. Yeah, and the Lakers. Not Ooh, so happy that about that. That blows my mind. That, Why? that uh, you know, that little white guy from Victoria oh, yeah. is is such a stu superstar. It's insane. Yeah, he Too he's, bad he jumped to the Lakers. Well, as a Laker fan, I'm <laughs> I was happy, but he's old, you know, us old white guys. You never want an old white guy on your basketball team. That's never a good thing. Yeah. You know, that old white guys just don't know when to shut up. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, look, I got some gray in my beard now. I don't know. 
It's crazy. Yeah, I, I had a good beard going on last month, but uh, same thing. It's, it's coming in to- just white, so it's, it's not working for me. Yeah, always when you watch golf tournaments, they always have the all the how to how to color your beards. Because <laughs> yeah. who watches well, golf? Old white guys. <laughs> speaking of beards, I finally yeah. uh, Dollar Shave Club. I'll give them a plug because <laughs> oh. they. They actually they're available in Canada after as of last month I think. Mm-hmm. So I saw that and figured, you know, I've heard about this online all the time. Try it out. This stuff is great. Yeah. Mind you, it took yeah. three weeks to get here, but for I think six bucks a month, I get uh, I got my few razor handle and you get four blades. You ever, you ever gone to buy razor blade cartridges? They're like fifty bucks for a, for, you know. Six There's a reason why they give you the handles for free, right? You're like, oh, I got a free handle. Awesome. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> then you go. Yeah, and then you got it. Yeah, that's the big thing, the, 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 the shave shops. There's one that opened here in the mall right here, you know, the fancy, you know, single blade, uh, you know, shave shops. You know, that you go and get your uh, straight razor uh, shave and then buy all this paraphernalia. And, you know, it's also, you know, you get a handle for like 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are these guys thinking? I don't make that kind of money. <laughs> oh, no. Well, cool. Well, what time is it? Oh, my goodness, we're over. That's what, happens. Over. That's what happens when you're talking. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Because we, I got no place to be. We can talk a little longer if you got something you want to talk about. No. Well, back to hockey because yeah. I really diverted from that. I actually, you know, I do like hockey. Canucks. Canucks I like. I hate Luongo, but, uh, you know, I respect. Um, he's, you know, um, a lot of people up here that just don't like the guy because um, they because they know he doesn't want to be here. Um, you know, I think he's got a house in Florida. That's where he wants to be. Uh, but uh, you know, he's just a whiner. But um, there's something about NHL playoff hockey that is, I mean, it's awesome to watch. It's just too damn long. I mean, it goes till the middle of June. And, you know, after like six weeks of hockey playoffs, it's, people really start, you know, lose interest fast, even up here. Yeah, well, I mean, the West was what? Yeah, the the Coyotes West. and uh, the Kings, right? So that must have been wonderful for you Canadians to watch that. Yeah. And uh, it was, the ice was melting here in Arizona. They had to bring in extra air conditioners to cool the building because they couldn't keep the ice from getting slushy. Wow. Crazy. Hey, okay, speaking of that, I, I had to look up. I hit Google Maps last week, <laughs> Googling uh, Sochi, right? Yeah. Or is that yeah, Sochi. Like, yeah, Sochi. You got it right. Sochi, Russia. And Black Sea, maybe. Realize, it's so far south, and apparently it was like 20 degrees Celsius, which is like 70 degrees in Sochi last week. Oh, wow. Uh, how are they going to host the Winter Olympics? Same way you guys did. Yeah, I guess up in the... Yeah, snows up in the mountains. Yeah, I mean, they you guys, kind of, yeah. you guys weren't having downhill ski events in downtown Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess it was touch and go even here too. I think if the Olympics had been like two weeks earlier, there there would have been trouble. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. The what's the closer uh, resort? What's that over there? Uh, where the you know the the one just uh, across just north of Vancouver before you get to uh, Whistler what was what's that one? Oh, like Grouse Mountain. Yeah, that was there. Had so much. It was so hot there. They were trucking the snow in and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a that's a little mountain. It's almost in downtown Vancouver. You can almost hit you know hit it with a rock. It's, yeah, well, that's so. Right was, that's probably why it wasn't any good. But you know, I mean, I don't know. These days, technology, you, you can hold probably a Winter Olympics anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Have they ever held a Winter Olympics in the south of the equator yet? Do you know? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't think so. You know, the Japan, I mean, other than Japan and Europe and the United States and Canada, can you think of any other place they've held a Winter Olympics? Yeah, yeah. You're... That sounds like a, that sounds like a story now. about it south of the equator. Oh no, you didn't. Well, you, you was well, so this is the deal with. So that would be kind of cool, though, right? Think about it. You have it in uh, Chile, right? When would it be? It'd be in July. How cool would that be? Yeah, right. How cool yeah. would that be? You know, you'd be outside sweating in the pool, watching bobsled go down some Andes hill. 
Wow. Yeah, you that know? would be fun. Otherwise, where would you hold it? I guess. I guess out you could hold it somewhere in Africa, or uh, New Zealand. Um, New Zealand's got skiing. Other than that, I don't think anywhere. Right? Is India? Does, do Indians ski? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. No. Australia, there's skiing in Australia. I there gotta be right. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they, overall, they just don't watch this stuff, right? It's all, it's all about the TV rights and. Uh, so who, who watches the Winter Olympics in the Southern Hemisphere? Like, you know, relatively relatively few people. Oh, no all the wrestling. No more wrestling in the Summer Olympics. I don't you get that. Know. I don't right because that's like the when you think about Greeks, what do you think of? You think of marathons. Or you think of wrestling. It's like no. why would you? I mean, they got ping pong. <laughs> yeah. What do they call that? Table tennis. Yeah. Modern pentathlon. I don't even know what that is. Maybe geocaching will get in there one day. Oh, who knows? They used to have. I was looking up of of uh, winter or summer Olympic sports, and in the nineteen oh four or oh six, I can't remember which year they were all. They had motor boating. That was an Olympic wow. sport, motor boating. Okay. And uh, literally, literally, it's a motor boat. It's not some sort of sexual <laughs> thing you do. <laughs> Oh, I don't know where that just came from, but uh, <laughs> I wasn't thinking that one. No, for uh, some reason I was. I don't know, but uh, yeah, if they could have motor boating. I guess they don't really have motor boating anymore. You know, they they're supposed to golf is supposed to come back. I I saw in uh, I think that's back in uh, um, what's the one in uh, Brazil, São Paulo or wherever Rio. Where is it? São Paulo, I think it is. Um, I don't know. It's golf. golf. Real. Yeah. Well, you know, baseball, yeah, baseball used to be in there. <laughs> Yeah, but hey, the World Baseball Classic is happening this year. Yes. Oh, everyone's coming, so that's uh, that starts out. They'll be here in Phoenix, I think, in uh, L.A., uh, probably back east too, somewhere. Uh, we get to see all the Japanese players school the American players. Um, <laughs> that was think about I, you know, four years ago. It was great. I, that was fun to watch. It's it's hard though because the American and North American players they're sort of out of practice right at the beginning of the season. Japan players are still even though their season did end a couple months ago they're still kind of in on it so they're ready to go you know it's like let's do this and the Americans are like eh, I'm tired <laughs> you know I think it was uh, Korea and uh, Japan were the finalists last year I think that was what it was so they're all back in uh, Cuba Cuba. They're back, I guess, and we'll see which players from Cuba will uh, will uh, stay in America after their plane goes back. <laughs> you know, and then you got the Venezuelans and the the Dominicans and all these other small countries in the Caribbean. It's it's pretty amazing how much of a world sport baseball is these days. Yeah, you know, everybody. Sure I, I have a friend in the, in the Netherlands, and he says, "Oh yeah, it's like the second biggest sport in the Netherlands is like baseball." Now he could be crazy, and it might not be true. But you know, even if it's in the top five, that's pretty amazing. You know, so who knows? You know, baseball is baseball is a world sport, and gosh, Giants are going to win it again this year, right? How can they not? Yeah, Giants. They're the Yankees of the West. I know. No, no, no. That Yankees of the West are the well, shoot, it's hard. No, the 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 the, the Red Sox of the West are the, are the, the Dodgers. Yeah. Okay. You know, because they haven't won, they won a World Series since 88. And they got all this money they spent. Idiots. <laughs> but, of course, for the Rockies, it's a problematic, right? You got the Giants, who are a very well-run organization that win world championships. And you got the Dodgers, who are spending more money than anybody in, in baseball. It's like, what are the, what are the, what are the Diamondbacks, Rockies, and Padres do? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, I don't know. They just love the game. That's all. You just gotta shake your head and say, "Okay, we'll have fun, and maybe we'll get lucky and get in a wild card." But <laughs> it's, yeah. it's hard. Well, there's two wild cards now, right? You remember that? That was a new thing last year. So you get two wild cards. So the wild cards last year were who? They were the Reds and no, no, no. It was St. Louis and uh, the Braves, right? They were the two. And, so. and the wild cards have been doing real good. They've been winning it all. Yeah, the Giants were – well, last year the two finalists were not. The Giants yeah. won the West and the um, the Tigers won the Central. But, yeah, right in the last couple of years it has been a – at least one of the two teams has been a, a wild card team. 
And let's just say it was like any sport, right? Uh, well, we were talking about college base or college basketball. At the end of the season, there's always these teams that are really hot: the Butlers, the George Washingtons, the Gonzagas. Um, you know, the, the, the tournament comes around, they go crazy. You know, and then you get a team like Indiana that's that might be very good. They're in a tough uh, uh, tournament for the Big Ten, and they lose, and then they're all angry, and they go into the the tournament angry, and they lose in the second round to you know some team. And everyone's like, "How could this happen?" It's like it's basketball, I guess, right? That's why we yeah. like it. So there was a Kickstarter. I don't know if you saw this. I think it's dead already, uh, but it was a new way to pick teams. It was an iPhone app. And it was an easy way to pick the teams on your on your phone, and you could. So we'll see when that oh, comes live. Tournament? Yeah, I wish I could remember. I'll, I'll send you a link for it. Actually, I'll put it in the show notes in case anyone else wants to see it. It'll probably be in in the app store when it's done. But it was kind of a neat way to do it on a phone because you know you only have a certain amount of room here. You know, I mean, I guess if you have a Galaxy, you got this big phone. But you know, on a regular phone, you only have a certain amount. So how do you pick sixty four or sixty five teams? Yeah. 68 teams, though, isn't it now? It's something weird now. So that should be kind of cool. I don't know. And then then also I got this invite. I've been doing uh, fantasy baseball for years, and I just got the email saying let's get started. I'm not so sure I'm going to do it this year. I think I'm burned out on fantasy baseball. That's tough. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it's just too long a season. I don't every, know day. Long every day. Every day. At least with, with football, right? You, you, you got all week to figure it out. Every day yeah. you got to worry about who did what, you know, which pitcher do you start. Yeah. It's like <sighs> – It keeps you in the game, though. I mean, I did – that was my, how I really got into NFL, I think, was uh, – actually, that was when I lived in Florida. We had a great fantasy league, and uh, I had Peyton Manning. He was my quarterback for four years, so that's how I really became a fan of Manning because I just watched him, and I knew all his stats for, for four years. I think I had Edron, Edron James, too. Um but Those it's good, good for times. fans. So, good yeah, anyone who wants to learn a sport, you know, if you want to learn more about baseball, join a fantasy league, and it kind of forces you to watch it. It's, it's cool for that. Yeah, yeah, no. And these days, man, they have apps are so awesome. The MLB app, you know, you can go there and you watch. You're in the stadium, and every pitch, you know exactly where that pitch went, how fast it was, how many inches outside, you know, what is the the matchup. I mean, it's the, the amount of statistics that are available in sports. You know, I I always grab this book. And I'll do it again. This, if you got to learn about statistics, you know, using R, scraping websites, this is your book right here, Baseball Hacks by O'Reilly. Cool. You know, it goes in on how to do all this stuff. And you can see you make all these little fancy graphs and things using R. Um, baseball's cool. great for that because it has so much history, right? You go back 100 years and the stats are all kept. Yeah. Oh, you baseball know. stats are, are amazing. I mean, actually, stats, when, when I was uh, – um, when I was coaching my kid, I, I managed a team down in Northwest Florida. It was fun. That was when, when he first started, and uh, it's cool to see your kid playing now. You're are you you're not coaching this year, right? Uh, I don't think I am. Um, probably do assistant coaching, but I'm not going to be manager again this year. Oh, okay. So I was always manager, and it was a good way. I was new to a town, and figure okay, the best way to become get get to know people in new town, just become yeah. a baseball yeah. coach, and it was cool. But this one year when he was eight. Um, we had like a little all-star team and the guy that coached with me was right. He was just a nut about stats. So he had stats about everything. And before each game, he'd give me a sheet and we knew everything about every player where, you know, where this kid could hit, where he couldn't hit. And, uh, we went as far as we could, we could go that year. We won, we won the title for all of, uh, Northwest Florida. For oh, wow. Girls. Oh, wow. It was cool. And all because of stats. <laughs> Felt a little. <laughs> people were thinking, "Well, I mean, God, they're eight years old, but uh, man, it, they're they're serious about their ball down there." Yeah, yeah, no, baseball is fun about stats and and even geography about where you are and elevation and stuff. I I don't know. I don't think I've ever shown. I'm gonna grab this camera here. I I got this uh, map on Kickstarter here. Let's see if I can aim it better. But see, those are all the stadiums, the baseball stadiums, mm -hmm. right? And they're, which angles they are and where they're pointing. So if we look at Texas, you can see there is uh, Houston at the bottom, and it points north. And you see the outfield line? Ah, uh, okay. Right? And then if you look at uh, there's the Texans, their stadium faces southwest, and there's their outfield line. And it's just this yeah. cool little visual. It was a Kickstarter thing that I have. 
there. So, you know, it's geography and all this other stuff, right? That's, I mean, you remember when they were first doing all this, uh, the Google uh, and Bing 3D, um, 3D cities. What, what was the first thing they always did was the baseball stadiums. <laughs> yeah. You know, you could look at Camden Yards and Yankee Stadium and all the other stuff. And, it's you know, that's what's really cool about Kickstarter. When, you, you know, you think about uh, the, all the possibilities. I, I often think about all the consultants that are, you know, okay, I'm desperate for some work. What can I do? I need a new idea or something cool to work on. Use that as an example. As a baseball fan, I know. I think back, okay, Coors Field. I've, you know, I've seen many games there. The one thing you got to keep in mind think about when they're buying their tickets is okay. Where's the sun gonna be, right? And uh, believe yeah. me, when you're if it's August and you're in Denver and you're going to a game at two o'clock in the afternoon and it's 105 degrees. Yeah, there's the Rocky you know, Stadium. You do right not want to be looking into the sun. No, and you guys see so you guys face north. Yeah. So if you're in the outfield of the Rockies, you're facing into the sun in the afternoon, because the sun is especially early and later in the year is going to be low in the horizon. But you'll notice most stadiums, right? Yeah. What do they face? They face northeast. Um, you know, that's for the batters. You know, most of these face that way. Though nowadays it's different because a lot of these stadiums are inside, and it doesn't matter right. where, where you're facing. Uh-oh. There we go. Come on, okay. camera. There we go. Um, but that's kind of cool because that that, whoever did that map was able to take the location of the stadiums, mm -hmm. what angle it was, map the outfield, and then have this infinite which direction they face. It's, it's a total cartography thing. It's a blast. I, you know, I was always thinking about yeah. contacting that guy and saying, hey, we should make a, a map out of this, you know, Be kind of, a story map, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, anyone who has the data, that's what, you know, that's what they should be doing for fun. Now look, you see the stuff that, uh, that John at IDB Solutions is doing for um, beautiful looking, you know, um, visualizations. Just, you know, he's get, they're getting a hold of data and doing great stuff with it. And I keep, you know, I see that. And I'm like, wow, why are more people doing that? It's, it's a great way to generate buzz. I don't know why, you know. It's almost like when this is a job, people treat it like a job, right? Five o'clock, yeah. time to go home. What am I going to do? I'm not going to be doing mapping. Uh, I don't know if I'm that way. I'm always doing something yeah. with mapping or or, or location. Um, yeah. You know, but I think some people are just kind of like you know, it's a job, and when I go home, yeah. I'm going to watch. People, you know, people are busy though, and right, you know, we got we got to uh, take care of the important clients and contracts, and you know, get all the real work done. But uh, you know, keeping it real with stuff like that and keeping your workers happy, that's uh, you know, that's huge. So I think you got to keep, you know, folks should think about stuff like that more internally and, uh, you know, look at what people are interested in. Beer, beer maps, right, is oh. integrating that kind of data into something of, you know, that that's cool stuff. People just love it. Yeah, like a map, that map I have up there, the, the I mean, if that was a brewery map, <laughs> you put that on Kickstarter, you could retire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, people would just totally. We got to talk to Steve Coase when he's done with the um, GPS track maps. We'll have to uh, do yeah. it uh, a beer map, you know, beer delivery map. Let's GPS the beer delivery trucks. <laughs> you know, that's always interesting. The uh, uh, I was doing some work in downtown uh, Tempe, and uh, this was in late December, and uh, right before the, I can't remember what it's called now. It used to be, oh, it's the it's the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. It used to be the Insight Bowl. Um, but now it's the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. But it's at Arizona State Stadium. And I was there on a Tuesday before the game. I think the game was on a Thursday. And the all the delivery trucks delivering all that beer <laughs> downtown to all the bars, you know, in a college town. Uh, I was, I was, now I'm thinking, it'd be kind of cool to see GPS tracks of, 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 of trucks like that, you know, beer trucks. So you'd see them go into where the bars are. It would be a totally different look, you know. As opposed to, I don't know where Steve got his GPS tracks from, but I assume they're like UPS or FedEx or something like that, which go almost everywhere, right? And that's how you can look at his maps and say, hey, this looks like the city because literally nobody drives more of a city than a delivery company. Um, but, you know, beer trucks, uh, they would not go to resident, a lot of residential areas. They would go more where um, right. bars and stuff are. And it would be a totally different look. I'm sure they all got that data too. It's you know, it's 
important internal, you know, secret oh. internal stuff, though, right? They don't want to, I don't know, give away their client list or something. Maybe. Totally, right? Because that's the way that stuff is now. You track your employees, how much they're doing, efficiencies, and that kind of stuff. I think it's assumed that if you're working for a company as a delivery person, that uh, the C-level people know exactly where every truck is at every moment. Mm-hmm. You know, I suppose the old days where the trucks just went wherever they wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Cool. Wagon. Yeah, wagon right? Wagon. All, right. All right. Well, good. So, so where are you off? Uh, are you going to uh, Dev Summit this year? Is that uh, you... No, I don't think so. I, you know, I don't, I didn't get invited by any company to go and uh, haven't been really doing anything with the, uh, I've been doing a little bit of Esri work uh, with some of their APIs, um, doing some consulting right now on my own. Um, I'll try to figure out what I want to do next, but uh, you know, I, I probably would like to go, but I don't know. I don't see myself having spend six, seven hundred dollars on something like that um, when I'm not right. really doing it. I, you know, partly you want to go just because it's a cool crowd to be around. You know, especially now that the some of those yeah. uh, GUIQ guys are going to be there now. It'll probably be fun, but. You know, you you only have a certain amount of time in your life. You can't. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. You got to make money. Yeah. So I think the next yeah, conference I'm going to hit. It's all the partners, right? It's a partner thing. Yeah, it's a partner for thing. The most part, so. Especially if you're doing. So, if I was, if I had some cool little app that I was created using uh, uh, Esri APIs, I might come show it. But you know, I don't have anything of like that. I'm just sort of helping <laughs> fixing existing applications. That, <laughs> some of them that I actually created many years ago. Uh, I, I don't know what I was thinking back then, but uh, <laughs> knowing what I know well, now, I would. Good, it's a good place for people looking for work to go. I think if you know if you can go, and yeah, like you said, it costs, it costs a few dollars, and you got to get the invite too, I guess. Or I, would, I often forget that because I get to, I just ask if I can go. Well, the Dev Summit. Anybody can go to the Dev Summit. That's completely open. It's the Business Partner Conference. That that. It's not concurrent, but I think it's before. I can't remember if it's a before or after. That one, you have to be a business partner. It's closed. Um, technically, you're not supposed to blog about it, but everybody does. <laughs> you know. But then again, it's this Esri thing. You know, Esri has this this story arc, right? Jack comes out of the Fed, you see, and says, "This is this is the story," and then that story kind of goes to the business partner, then the UC, and they kind of. You know, after the Fed conference, you sort of already know what they're going to announce at the the Dev Summit. There's nothing really new there. Um, you know, in the old days, you didn't really hear about this stuff. You know, they didn't have social media. They didn't really blog about it. They didn't have videos. And now, you know, I don't think there's a much of a surprise at these conferences anymore. You know, you already know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Esri doesn't hold on to the next release of ArcGIS Online to say something at the UC. They just release it when it's ready. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I think my next conference I'm going, I can't remember if it's the Arizona Professional Surveyors. A Z P L S or I don't remember what it's called. Uh, it's up in uh, Prescott, Arizona. I'm giving a talk on using crowdsourced data with surveyors. <laughs> I oh, assume yeah. there'll be flaming arrows at me uh, for even proposing <laughs> crowdsourced. Surveyors. Yeah, I'm going up to disrupt that. Um, and then I'm probably going to head out to the Phosphor G uh, North America there in uh, in Minneapolis. I uh, I'm registered, I think. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm registered. I don't have my travel done yet, but uh, need to get that solved here relatively soon. That should be fun. Um, other than that, I I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't, I don't I don't think I'm going to go to UC this year. Um, but you know, it just depends what I'm doing. If I'm working for a company that's doing Esri stuff, then yeah, clearly I'll be there. If not, I probably won't go. But I might go just for vacation and just hang out. <laughs> not, not actually go to the conference, just hang out at the bars across the street from the conference. Hang out in the gas lamp. That would save me a lot of money, you know. Rather than spending a thousand dollars on my uh, on my ticket, I just <laughs> have a thousand dollars to spend in the gas lamp, yeah. which would last what about a day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got some yeah. metalachi. Yeah, yeah, told, yeah, metalachi. That would I, that was awesome. We need more metalachi. Uh, I shared that with somebody, and they just went to a metalachi concert a couple m- months ago, and they're like, "That was the most amazing thing I said." I said, "I know, right?" Were you there? You were. Were you there at Metal? Yeah, you came by yeah. to see that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That was kind of. It was kind of crazy, wasn't it? <laughs> Figure you learn about Metalachi at an Esri conference. It's just the way the world you rolls. Were. Actually, you know, one of the things I really got a kick out of at that party too was the. Uh, did you see the trains? The, yeah. the model train place. I, I'd actually taken my son to that in the wow. basement of. Um, yeah, I, that's. Man, I don't know how guys do that. Like I. 
I, I got this palsy that kind of happens when I get really small and my hands start shaking. And eh. But those old guys, man, they just sit there and it's like this guy's like, I'm going to recreate this bridge in some remote area of America. And he spends a year creating this thing. I mean, it's just amazing, every little detail. You know, you can stare at some of this stuff and you're just like, dude, the guy put tools next to this little box and it's, you know, this little, what they call them, HO or whatever, end scale thing. And it's like, how do you do that? Yeah. But it's it's amazing. Yeah, that's so big too, right? You know, Florida ceiling and that's a cool you know, the Balboa Park's an awesome place. I think it's you know, some people said, Oh, they don't like they liked having the, the, the party right outside the hotels, you could walk to it, but I don't know, Balboa's kinda cool having it there. That's always kind of a blast. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's nice. It's very different. A real different experience because you know, I find you're I don't you just don't kind of connect with the crowd with all the folks as much, it seems, because you're you're just Walking around, so much to see. Yeah, uh, it, it's amazing there, though. Beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, who knows? Maybe I will be at the UC, just in an, an informal, <laughs> yeah. in a hanging out. There's James out at the street corner. Wait, that that didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know where I'll be. I I never seem to know. It just kind of. I'm a poor planner. I don't like to plan out. Like I can't tell you in four months where I'm going to be. I, I typically do stuff four weeks out. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, so so you'll you'll find out. But you're going to Fort Collins here in the next. Yeah. So that's month. yeah. So in two weeks, be there for a few days. So, uh, hopefully, see a few people while I'm there. Yeah, you probably will. You know, yeah. you'll, you, that should be kind of fun. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I'm doing anything else. No, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm working. <laughs> so so much for me not you know taking some time off. <laughs> yeah, well that's good. No, no, it is good. I you know I working's hard. You got to work. You got to make you know I can't sit. I can't I can't sit on it. As much as I had fun in Hawaii, I can't sit on a beach and do nothing. Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Cool. It is. Awesome, Glenn. Thank you so much uh, for taking time and your busy schedule. Yeah. Uh, Next yeah, week, are you, uh, where's Zoe? There's, there's uh, Zoe over there. Here, let me show her again. Let me make it so that everyone can see it. There she is. Oh, Zoe. she's busy. Hey, are you alive? Not the ear twitch. Hey, hi, everyone. Ear twitch. Yeah, poor Zoe. You know, Zoe's. I'm thinking about that. Zoe's getting older now. She's been that's work. She's been working by my side for since she was a little pup, nine oh. years. So. Poor little thing. Poor little yeah, so thing. next week, our guest is uh, Steve CP of Red Hat, Open Shift, and whatever else he's doing. Um, Red Hat. Yeah, he's working for Red Hat these days, the Open Shift team. So we're thinking maybe we'll do some uh, Open Shift, uh, which is their uh, open cloud um, product, uh, which starts it free. So we might do some uh, Open Shift Geo stuff, which might be kind of fun. You know, if you want to host some of your geospatial stuff in the cloud and not pay a dime. Yeah. Well, that might free, be a good way to start. Good. Yeah, free so is good. All right. So, yeah. cool. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Glenn, as always, thank you very much. Stay out of trouble. Okay, James. Have some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Take your dog to have some coffee. Yeah, I'm going to go have some tea now. I'm starting to – actually, I feel good now. But hey, Yeah, safe. talking to me. It's like a, it's like a drug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right, everybody. Have a great week. You take care. Bye-bye.